Hi everybody, it's Maureen Wong here for yournextstamp.com. Today I have a fun little project to share with you um, when we open up this envelope. This may not look like much, but this is a background. And then here are my little play pieces. And this is perfect for a kid's gift or just something to play with. Um, what it is, is it is sticky backed sea creatures and the sea background is laminated you can see by the shine and so the sea creatures just stick right to it and they're repositionable and kids can play with them oh no I want that on the sand and I want this dolphin up here so um, your kids can play with them and then when they're done I have these little boards to keep the pieces on so that they don't get lost and when they're done for the day, they can just slip them back into the envelope and put it away and be done with it. So today I'm going to go through uh, the steps for making this project and I hope you'll watch it and like it. And if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And so let's get started. Okay, for our first step, we're going to make the background piece. And what I've got here is a piece of hot pressed, heavyweight watercolor paper. Um, you don't have to use the hot press. I just have a bunch of it on hand, so I used it. Um, but I would recommend a kind of a heavyweight paper because we're going to be doing a watercolor background um, that's going to warp it warp your paper so a heavyweight watercolor paper works well and also what I did too was I glued a piece of thin chipboard to the back of the watercolor paper and that will also help to keep it from warping too much um, I chose the size of 5 by 7 you can choose any size you want of course because um, this is just your project so you can make it any size you want and then just to let you know what I used to glue this down was tacky glue it has to be something that can withstand heat if you're going to use a heat gun to dry it so some double stick tapes don't resist heat so I wouldn't recommend using those to stick your watercolor paper down to your chipboard so the first thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of blue painters tape that's just a little bit wider then my piece and what I'm gonna do is tear it down the center now this doesn't have to be exact but you want it to be kind of nice and sort of even this is gonna be your sandy bottom so you don't want it too crazy but um, you do want two full pieces so I'm gonna look at it and I think this one will be nice for my sandy bottom so I'm going to stick it down to the bottom of my page and I want to stick that down really really well because I'm going to be doing my watercolor background technique on this and I don't want it seeping under the tape too much and if you notice there's a little smudge on my paper I don't know what that's from but I'm not worried about it at all because I'm going to color this so it's going to cover up that little smudge so don't worry about that. I make all kinds of mistakes in my craft room and I try to fix them before throwing them away. So you'll get a lot of tips from me on trying to fix things and not worrying too much about little boo-boos. So you just take your other piece of tape and put it off to the side. Don't throw it away. We're going to use that later. And now what we're going to do is get our distress inks and make our background. Actually, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black Sharpie. I'm on a Ranger craft mat here. I'm going to take a black Sharpie and just go roughly around the outside so I know where to make my background, how big to make it so that it covers my whole background. And don't worry about the Sharpie. That's either going to wipe off right away when I clean up my work surface or if it does dry on there for too long and gets a little bit more permanent, you can just take rubbing alcohol and wipe that right off. 
So I'm going to move my background piece out of the way. And I have three colors of Distress Ink here. Salty Ocean, Peeled Paint, and Dusty Concord. And I'm going to take them one at a time. And you've seen me do this technique before. Um, I'm doing it again here. It's a super simple background technique. And what I'm doing is I'm not squashing the whole pad down. I'm just putting the edge and that's so I can get a little bit more variety rather than having this big a space of blue. I have these little strips of blue. And then I'm going to come in with my peeled paint and do the same thing and just do little strips of color. And then finally I'm going to come in with my dusty concord and put little strips of that. And I don't really want to overlap the colors because when I spritz them, they will tend to blend a little bit. So you don't want to overlap your colors too much, or at all if you can. So there we go. I'm just putting a little bit of the Dusty Concord. And then we're going to get a spray bottle, or spritz bottle, I guess, and spritz this. And you can see that I didn't put a lot of color down. It's not a solid background. And for this background, I don't need it to be solid, partly because you can smush it around and pick up the color in other areas, and also because I'm probably gonna do more than one layer. So if I do more than one layer, it doesn't matter too much if I have some blank areas. But you see, they, when I squish this around here, and what I can do is wiggle it just a little bit, and that will help the color to spread. I don't want to wiggle it too much because that will blend my colors and kind of muddy them. So I'm just pressing this down into the background that I've made, and oh, that's really neat. But you can see that toward the edge here, it has muddied and blended a little bit. So what I can do is just take a baby wipe or a towel and I'm gonna blot off some of that color on the edges. But I've got some really nice coloring here in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is take my heat gun and heat that and I'll be right back. Okay, again, my piece is all dry and I've cleaned up my work surface. There were a couple of little white spots here and there um, where I either lifted off too much color or the color just didn't reach there. So what I did was I just dabbed my finger into the color that was on the mat and kind of painted in areas that I thought didn't have enough color. And um, I sprayed it a little and moved it around so that the color would move. But I didn't want the colors really to blend too much, so I didn't do too much of that. Um, but I'm really happy with how this looks. It's really splotchy and organic and um, fun. So I'm going to go with this. I find that usually two layers works pretty well. Um, any more than that, and you can start getting the colors kind of all over each other and it's not an effect that I care for. So what I'm going to do is very carefully peel off this painter's tape. Now I know it's supposed to be uh, not too sticky, but because we did press it down so hard, there is a chance that it could pull up the paper, especially because the paper has been wet and heat dried. So there's a chance that you might pull it up a little bit and yeah, the edges are kind of coming up a little bit. So I'm going to be really careful here. And there's a little bit of paper coming up. So what I'm going to do is just try and stop it from happening anymore by rubbing it off the tape and holding it down so it doesn't continue peeling. And if you want to skip the step with the painter's tape, I totally understand. It's a little bit fiddly and can sometimes ruin your work. And I'm going to try this again from the other side, or actually from here, because usually in the center it comes off a little bit easier. The edges tend to want to pull up. I mean the outside edges of the paper. So yeah, this is working a lot better. So I'm going to do is just tear this off and I can get out to the edge without ripping it up. So there's another little 
goof and a fix for you. And the reason why I did the, the tape layer is because I want to make a sandy bottom and I want it to look different from the top. I don't want to just smush in something and call it the sandy bottom. I actually want it to look a little bit different. And you can see some of the paper is still pulling up and that's to be understood. Just go really slowly and carefully and you'll do it as best as you can and you'll get a good result. Don't worry if a little bit of the paper tears up because we're going to color over it and we're going to cover this. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So there you can see I've got a really stark white bottom. And that is not my sandy bottom that I'm going for. So remember how we saved the other half of the painter's tape. I just put it at the top of my mat. The reason why we saved it is because it's a perfect reverse mask to do your sandy bottom. So you just fit that over there and you want to put it up just a slight bit. You don't want to leave a white line there. And you don't have to push this down as hard. We're not going to be wetting it or anything anymore. What we're just doing is sponging. So first of all, I'm going to sponge with antique linen. And that's just going to give it a nice little base color. And I'm just sponging away from the tape line so that it doesn't come up. And you can barely see that. I think my ink pad needs re-inking. But it's there. And then the next little effect we're going to do, if I let me get it out, is I'm going to use this mini splatter stamp from Your Next Stamp to make a little texture on the bottom. And I've got a block here for it. And I'm going to use that same antique linen. And what I'm going to do is just ink up my stamp and I'm going to stamp it on the surface. And I'm going to turn my block, ink that up again, and I'm going to stamp again, and it's going to get a slightly different look. And I'm doing it really lightly and unevenly, so what we're getting here is not a definite impression. It's just a little bit of texture to give you the image of maybe little rocks and pebbles and things at the bottom. And one more time. And the reason why I'm turning it is because I'm only using the edge of the stamp. So if I turn it and use all four edges, this is kind of a square. If I use all four edges, I get a different look every time I stamp. So I've just got a little bit extra here. I'm going to come back and fill that in. And by using a really light color like antique linen, which is actually good that I didn't re-ink my pad because it's really light, you can barely see that, but it's actually a really good effect because it's not too bold and drawing attention to itself, but it's giving just a little bit of nice texture. And now what I'm going to do is come back with my Distress inks that I used before, the Salty Ocean Peeled Paint and Dusty Concord because when you look at the ocean, the bottom does not look that stark, um, light tan compared to the rest of the water. It's going to have the water colors, the colors of the water. So I'm going to go over that with the colors that I use for my water background. And I'm not doing it really heavy. So you'll see the effect that I'm left with. And I'm just putting in a little bit of that green. And a tiny bit of the purple. Okay. I'm going to put my inks away. And then I can show you the finished result. So 
So once again, we're going to very carefully peel up our tape. Hopefully it shouldn't be as difficult this time because we didn't stick it down too hard and we also didn't get it wet again. So here we go. <gasps> the big reveal. <laughs> And there we go. We've got a nice defined sandy bottom. It's got some texture in it. It kind of blends in a little bit with the water, but it doesn't have the exact same background as the water. So it's just a little bit different. And now what we're gonna do is cover this to make it a surface that we can play with our pieces on. And what I have here is Duck Brand peel and stick clear laminate. You can use clear contact paper if that's what you have. And I'm going to cut a piece just a little bit larger than my background. And then what I'm going to do is stick this down and let me show you a little trick for sticking this down. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we get a corner started. That's always the hardest part. Okay, there we go. I'm getting a little corner started like that. See, I pull back the waxy backing. And actually, let me start a little bit more than that. And then what I'm gonna do is put it over my piece. Let me get that in frame. Okay, and then you can see I'm sticking down that one exposed corner to get it started. And I'm sticking that down pretty well. Then what I'm going to do is put my finger on that area, get a hold of the back part that I folded under, and I'm just going to pull it carefully. And it's going to cover my piece with the clearance stick. Peel and stick, sorry clear laminate. And then you're going to want to stick that down really well. And you can, you know, if you want, use like a bone folder to kind of help stick it down a little bit. But be careful, you don't want to do things like that because you could gouge little holes in your laminate. So just be very careful with it, but you want it stuck down really well. And here is another tip for you. On a previous project, I actually just folded the extra edges around to the back of the piece, and I thought that would be sufficient. But in just a few hours time, it was bubbling up around the edges because the laminate did not want to bend. So in the areas where it was bent, it would kind of bubble up away from the edges and try and straighten itself out. So I would not recommend folding this back. What I am going to do, let me just get rid of my craft mat here. And I'm going to flip this over and take my craft knife and I'm just going to run along the edges. Careful not to cut into my background and get that laminate off. And you may think that it's going to want to peel away from the edges because there's nothing stopping it because it's not folded around. But actually, when you do it this way, the edges stay down pretty well. I've tried this with another project and um, I have watched it for a couple of days after doing it just to make sure that it does stay down. And the trick is you really need to burnish it down well to make sure that it's stuck to those edges. So um, if I go back in with my bone folder, just be really careful, but kind of make sure those edges are properly stuck down. And of course you can just do this with your fingers. But once those are really stuck down well, it doesn't tend to pull up. And let me get my craft mat back in here. This grid is kind of hard on the eyes. So there is our background. 
you can see that a little more closely and you can see how the laminate is covering the whole surface and this is the playset background okay next up we're going to be working on our pieces to use on our playset Okay, so the next step is we're going to stamp out a whole bunch of images, and I'm using the Your Next Stamp Sets Sea Creatures 1. And I have this one out of the package, but this is Sea Creatures 2. And I'm also using the matching dies that go with them. What I did was just stamped out a whole bunch of of the images onto heavy watercolor paper. It's the same watercolor paper I used for the background and I really like this heavy weight one because when you make your play figures with it it will be nice and sturdy and will hold up to being played with. So I stamped these in Versamark Onyx Black ink and let them dry and then I started coloring them with my Derwent Inktense pencils. I have a whole bunch of them out here. And then you can see I have a number of, of finished colored images. One thing that I like to do is, um, and you don't have to do this by any means, but I kind of like to have references for what things look like. Um, I tried to do a little bit more detailed coloring and um, since I have so many colors of the Inktense pencils, I thought I might as well go in and color them sort of semi-realistically. So what I did was I have my tablet. This is a Kindle. Oop, there I was for a second. <laughs> and I would just Google whatever creature it was, like a puffer fish, and then I'd pick one of the puffer fishes and enlarge the picture and then sort of color it like the image and you don't have to go with um, the exact colors or anything but I tried to go with sort of similar colors and then you can see this one I added little brown dots in colored pencils. Um, when I was using my Inktense pencils then I was blending out the colors with my water brush and when I was happy with it then I added in the brown dots and I don't want them to spread so that's why I used colored pencil instead of ink tense pencil I didn't want to chance that uh, running and with my seahorse I actually did some little white detailing with a sharpie extra fine point white paint pen and you can see I just colored these and then what you're gonna do is go back to your contact paper and this is the same one that we use to cover the background and you're gonna let's do this little crab and these images are so small you don't have to worry as much about bubbles so I'm just going to cover that and I'm going to make sure it's stuck down really, really well as best I can. And if you want to use um, like a bone folder or something to go over that just to make sure it's really burnished down. But as I said before, be very careful with what kind of tools you use on this, this um, peel and stick covering because you could rip it or warp it or I'm not sure what else you can do with it by accident and you really don't want to do that. So now that I have it stuck down I'm gonna find the matching die and here it is the little crab die. Let me zoom in a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. Now what I'm gonna do is line up my die as best as I can and these cutout dies make it so easy and then I'm gonna place a piece of whoops I think I just shifted it so let's try that again okay that's exactly where I want it and now I'm gonna place a piece of 
used washi tape. I have a bunch of these little pieces of washi tape that I use over and over again for my die cutting purposes. So there you go. And then you're going to run that through your die cutting machine. And when it comes out, you'll have a perfectly laminated little sea creature. Okay, I'm back. I have this tab, adhesive tab dispenser um, from way back when. I'm not sure if they even make it anymore, but basically what you want to use is some sort of a double stick adhesive. And you're just going to put a little piece of that down on the back. And you don't want to touch it too much and take off all that stick, but you want to make sure that it's not going to come off. And because we didn't laminate the back of it as well, it should stick pretty well to that side. And then I'll show you what this all looks like when it comes together. Okay, so here's our finished project, and a couple things that I did off camera were to make holding boards for all the pieces. Basically what I did was I just took five by seven pieces of chipboard, covered them with the clear laminate, just like I did with the background, cutting the edges off, and I made two of them to hold all my pieces. The other thing I did was make these little seaweeds. Um, there are two different seaweed dies, as you can see there's a single one and then a small double one in the sets of the matching dies and what I did was I just got a green cardstock that I liked, covered it with the clear laminate peel and stick and then I went ahead and cut each die out two times so that they have a little bit of seaweed to play with with their play set too. So I hope you enjoyed this project and if you do make um, something similar or something using these ideas we'd love for you to share them with us so that we can come and see them and we'll see you sorry everybody I forgot one last thing in case you're wondering about this envelope this is from when you get those Christmas picture cards from like Costco or Sam's Club or wherever online um, I didn't give out all of my cards last year, so I had some envelopes left over, and that's why it has the silver lining. Um, but this is actually the perfect size. I think it's six by eight, so it's actually the perfect size to put my little five by seven playset in. So what I do is just put the background on top because it doesn't have any of the pieces on it to get snagged in the envelope, and then I just slip it in the envelope. And um, one other thing is, one cute thing you can do with the backer pieces, the holders for the pieces, is that you can personalize it with the child's name. Just stamp or write their name underneath on the chipboard before you laminate it, and then they can have a nice little personalized gift. So, okay, now I'm done. I hope you enjoyed this, and have a great day. See you at yournextstamp.com.